Today I'm back in one of my favorite spots in Bay Harbor Islands and I wish they had more spots like this around Miami where you have these big beautiful luscious trees that provide a lot of shade because when it starts getting hot out like this I'll tell you what it makes a night and day difference being in these shady areas versus being out in the middle of the direct sun especially walking on the street and all of this that's one huge improvement i think the whole city of miami could do is just have more trees everywhere because we need more shade but apparently u.s businesses do not need more shade because we are starting to see a unprecedented amount of bankruptcies in corporate america now i want to thank one of my subscribers pete for sending me this story and it talks all about different types of bankruptcies that are happening right now throughout the country. One interesting thing about these bankruptcy stories is Bob Nardelli, he is the former CEO of Home Depot, and this story came out just days before the Bed Bath & Beyond bankruptcy. And listen to what he said. He said, I think we're going to see a lot of bankruptcies like Bed Bath & Beyond. We got Walmart not only laying people off, but closing stores. We got Accenture laying people off. We got Amazon closing distribution centers. So I think there's a tremendous mixed message. And then he goes on to say that at present, the complexity of the American economy is different than anything I have seen in my 52 years. Needless to say, at the moment, we are living through uncharted territory. When it comes to the financial sector, when it comes to business, when it comes to the housing market, like we can all try to make our predictions but at the same time it's kind of hard to predict based on what has happened in the past when we have something new happening right now that's never happened before and one of the big concerns for a lot of different businesses right now is the amount of inventory that's building up with these businesses which is a sign of a slowdown in consumer spending and a sign that people cannot afford to buy things that are not essential right now look at this guys Something crazy happened to this house on the water. Wonder if that was from all the rain that we got. Now here's the straight up facts when it comes to bankruptcies, okay? You're seeing bankruptcy filings across the United States rise for the third straight month in March and across all major industries. So every single month this year, bankruptcy filings have been ticking up. There have been a total of 42,000 368 new bankruptcies filed just last month. So that's up 17% from the previous March when there were 36,000 bankruptcy filings. And this is the highest number of monthly bankruptcy filings since April of 2021. But it gets worse than that because in March there were 71 corporate bankruptcy petitions and that's a jump from 58 in the previous month of February. And then in the first quarter, corporate bankruptcy filings came in at 183, which is more than any comparable period in the last 12 years. So pretty much since the last financial meltdown that our country has seen. And like I said, guys, you could compile, you know, a whole book at this point of all the data points that are starting to line up that we haven't seen since the last 12 to 15 years when things were not doing so well. A lot of people say, oh, it's gonna be different this time and you know, we're not gonna see these, this big housing market crash, we're not gonna see the massive layoffs, we're not gonna see the foreclosures, but everyone's not really looking at the fact that, yeah, it is different this time. It's actually worse because we have more problems this time that we didn't even have last time, you know? Last time, most of this was all fueled by the subprime lending crisis and the derivatives market. But this time we have a similar situation happening. Our government just approved a brand new subprime lending crisis that's coming to a city near you. And on top of that, we have inflation. That's the highest it's been in 40 years. We have unaffordability. We have banks that are starting to close up and go out of business. You have banks that are decreasing their amount of lending, which is also going to lead to slowing down in the economy. And I still think that the worst is yet to come, that we really haven't felt the full effects of any of this yet. And we're just only starting to get kind of a preview of it in the first quarter of 2023. And if you think I'm making this up, 
Here's the facts, guys. The lending activity by banks suffered the biggest plunge ever in the two weeks ending March 29th. Commercial lending in the country declined by $105 billion during this period, the highest amount since 1973. You're talking 50 years ago was the last time that bank lending was at this low number. If you don't think that's gonna have a major impact on the economy, I'm afraid people like that are just gonna have to find out the hard way that there is no soft landing from this. There is no quick overnight recovery, you know? These problems take time to play out in terms of the effects of inflation, the effects of high interest rates, the effects of these banks not lending nearly as much money as before. This stifles growth like in an unbelievable way. And that stifled growth leads to people getting laid off. It leads to people not having as much money to spend in the economy. Or people that even do have money might not spend nearly as much to save more for a rainy day. And then when the unemployment rate starts ticking up from all of this, you're gonna see more people stop paying their bills. They're gonna stop paying utilities. They're gonna stop paying mortgage payments. They're gonna stop paying rent payments. So the effects from all of this really hasn't been felt yet and i don't see any single way that our government or the fed can fix this their only option is to lower interest rates and turn the money printer back on except oh wait a minute if they do that then kiss the value of the dollar goodbye from whatever little bit value it has left so there's that. This slowdown of the bank lending is also leading to the credit crunch, which makes it harder for people to get loans on regular things. We see this a lot right now with the car loans. We see it right now with commercial lending. We also see it with layoffs because the first quarter of 2023 saw job cuts rise by 396% from the same period one year ago. So almost a 400% increase in layoffs, guys, in one year. Tell me that's not significant. And the number one reason that companies are letting their employees go, they said market conditions followed by cost cutting, okay? So these guys are just trying to keep the company in business right now. They're seeing things slow down. They're seeing sales decrease. And this is how they stay in business is by giving you the pink slip. And you know, it's reasons like this that I think everybody needs to have some gold and silver. Here's some facts about that, okay? Over the past 10 years, gold prices have increased, but not as dramatically as other common investments like the S&P 500, for example. So a lot of people, especially investors, don't like metals because of this reason. They can get a better return in the stock market, okay? Since 2013, Gold spot prices have increased from $1,300 an ounce to almost $2,000 an ounce today. And the S&P 500 went from $1,500 in 2013 to near $4,000 today. So people will say, well, that's an easy win. The stock market wins every time. But the thing is, not every single year ends on a positive note with the stock market. If you look at the annualized return from the S&P 500 spring 2022, to spring 2023, you actually would have lost 7%. Gold actually went up 0.5%. And you can say, oh, 0.5% is a terrible return. And this is why I tell people that I don't look at gold and silver as an investment. I just look at it as a hedge against inflation. It's more like a long-term savings account, guys. This is how you have to think about it when you buy it. It's not like you're buying shares of the S&P 500 or Apple or Amazon and you're gonna turn around and sell it for big money, okay? It's money that you set aside that's not gonna get ripped away in the form of inflation. And it's also good just to have that diversity in your portfolio. If you are big on investing and you have metals in your portfolio, then on down years like that, when the stock market is way down, you actually might see a marginal increase with your metals portfolio. So get yourself some physical gold and silver today. Give National Gold Group a call at 1-888-840-5945 or use my link in the description below, MB Gold 2023. Now the reality is signs of trouble are just everywhere. You have Stellantis, they are the Chrysler parent company, and you're talking about the company that makes all of these Chrysler cars and trucks. You're talking about Jeep, 
Dodge, all these big car brands are under this Stellantis group, okay? And they're offering voluntary buyouts to 33,500 of their US employees. You think these Amazon layoffs are big at 9,000 people letting them go? That's still a drop in the bucket compared to this 33,500. But at least these people are being offered buyouts and they're not just saying, you know, goodbye. Uh, it was nice knowing you. And that's just in the US. They're offering 31,000 hourly workers this buyout, 2,500 salary workers, and they're also offering similar buyouts to some of their employees in Canada, but doesn't say how many. The COO of Stellantis said that we need to become more efficient. So obviously, these guys are not turning a good profit right now and are in desperate need to let people go and they'd rather pay you to leave than have you continue working there and them hemorrhaging the money in the form of your salary every year. Look at this lot for sale, guys. We haven't even seen rain in a little while. We had the big rainstorm a little over a week ago and look at the amount of water inside this lot. Imagine you're building a house here and how easily water can pool in this area. Let's see how much they're asking for this thing. This is when you know the housing market's out of control. When people are trying to flip empty properties here, you have a piece of land just sitting here somebody paid $2 million for at the early part of 2022. Now they're trying to sell it for $2.8 million. Are you telling me that this flooded yard is worth $800,000 more a year later? I mean... Good luck with that one, guys. But let's look at the property taxes. They haven't even seen the increase from any of this yet because look, they're still only paying $15,000 a year and the assessed value is at $792,000, which is way below what they paid for this place. So these guys are about to get smacked with a big increase in property taxes as well. Now, here's the most ridiculous part of this Stellantis employee buyout. Listen to what they're saying. The competition is fierce and the cost of electrification cannot be passed on to the customer. Make no mistake, we intend to win in the marketplace. So everybody who's getting this buyout offer right now, apparently it all comes down to the fact that these guys cannot make enough money on electric cars. They can't charge more because people don't want to pay the premium. Electric cars are already quite a bit more expensive than gas powered cars. And on top of that, they'd rather let go of a bunch of their employees to try and win this game with electric cars. I mean, this is insane, guys. I understand a businesses need to compete in the marketplace, but all these companies rushing towards a technology that isn't even fully developed yet in terms of longevity and uh, efficiency like let's listen to the story i put in a video a couple days ago of a guy that has owned electric car for three years and now wants to go back to a gas powered car it was in this video right here in case you missed it you know it's crazy and that's coming from someone that owns an electric car that's tired of the the crap that they have to put up with it and you know the interesting thing about this story is I actually have a direct personal connection to this story in a way because one of the plants that they're shutting down is going to you know lay off 1350 workers and it is the plant from Belvedere Illinois that's my hometown that's where I grew up I used to live a stone's throw away from this Chrysler plant okay and they're citing the reasons for this is you know they need to make more money on their electric vehicles and this is one way to do it, it's by letting people go. And not everybody's getting this buyout either because this only applies to pretty much tenured workers that have 15 years of experience or more with Stellantis. So if you're somebody who's lower on the totem pole than that, you're probably just getting laid off at this point. Well, check it out guys, I remember this house was for rent for the longest time. Let's see what it actually rented for. Wow, six months of trying to rent this place and no takers. They went from 10,000 a month down to 8,500 a month. Nothing happened. And the last time it rented was for 6,500 a month in 2019. So they were way off of that old figure. Property taxes, 27 grand a year. Must be nice paying that with the house sitting empty all that time. And it's not just Stellantis doing this. You had General Motors, uh, they let go of about 5,000 salaried workers and they accepted buyouts from General Motors, okay? You had Ford recently 
cut jobs in Spain and Germany and other parts of Europe, they let go of another 3,000 people as well. And the other thing about this is the demand for cars doesn't seem to have really have gone down all that much. And yet you have all these automakers pulling back on the amount of staff that they have to build these gas powered cars. So, and who's gonna be going out and buying these expensive electric vehicles that only go maybe 200 miles on a charge during this recession, guys, when people have less money than ever. To me, this sounds like business suicide, you know, but hey, that's just me. I would just be going off of consumer data and surveys like, hey, do you wanna buy an electric car or not? Forget about what the other companies are doing. If you got 80% of the people saying they don't want an electric car, then why on earth would you be taking away your resources to build your gas powered cars in hopes of this long shot right now. And I'm sure you guys also heard about Bed Bath & Beyond. Yeah, they're finished, okay? They're closing all of their stores. This is the one good thing about when this happens that I wanna stress in my videos too, is every time you see something like this happen, oh, Bed Bath & Beyond, gone, right? They're done, no more. And so what is this gonna do? You have all this empty retail space and you already have these other major retailers looking into taking over these spots. You got TJ Maxx, Home Goods, Ross for Less, uh, Burlington Coat Factory, Five Below, even Planet Fitness Gym is looking at taking over all these Bed Bath & Beyond locations because the amount of retail spaces that have been built over the past couple of decades that are this size are pretty low. So you have businesses out there that need these big stores for one reason or another, and that's an opportunity for these businesses. So the point here is that there's going to be opportunities like this for you in the form of maybe picking up a foreclosure or starting a side business to help people with a need that wasn't previously there, but now is there because of the way the economy is. So this is what you gotta do over the next couple of years. You have to be looking out for any opportunities that might come your way. But the only thing you have to be careful about is a lot of distractions can sometimes be disguised as opportunities. So just keep that in mind as well. Now, anyone who watches my channel religiously might remember this story from a couple of months ago about this attorney here in Florida that is helping local cities and governments start to place liens on properties that have unpaid property taxes and unpaid violations and fines and things like this. His name is Matt Widener. He's helping all of these local governments recoup much needed cash through the repossession of these homes, essentially, that aren't paying their bills. And there was a story of a woman that actually this started happening to her. Okay, the city placed a lien on her property because she has unpaid fines from a violation that occurred all the way back in 2014 where she had a bunch of dirt and mold and mildew growing on the outside of the house along with a bunch of the paint starting to chip away. So this is what was happening with her. You guys see all these houses being built behind me here, you know? This one, one next door, that one over here. Brand new houses being built everywhere around here. So this woman hired a handyman back in 2014 to resolve this for her, you know, cut down the vines and the trees that were causing this problem and to repaint the outside of the house and things like that. And she thought the whole thing was resolved. Well, she got hit with a lawsuit recently. Apparently the city went back that same year in 2014 and did another inspection and found the property to still be non-compliant. But the problem is she never got the letter saying that this was the case because she ended up moving to San Antonio and keeping that house vacant, which I think was in Bradenton, by the way, somewhere in Bradenton, Florida. So she had this house in Bradenton vacant while she was in San Antonio taking care of her parents and she never received the violation letter because they sent it to the house in Bradenton. Well, the problem is that when you don't pay your fines in the city of Bradenton, they charge you $100 a day until your bill amounts to the $75,000 total in fines, which is the maximum limit allowed by the city statute. So nobody can incur more than this 75,000, but what they can do is foreclose on you 
when you have a bill like this. So this woman ended up hiring her own attorney to see what could be done about this and she tried to get a settlement with the city at least and the original agreement was that they would settle on 30,000. Her attorney apparently was able to get the settlement all the way down to $10,000. The deal is not final yet. She's already sent the 10 grand to her an attorney in an escrow account to try and hopefully get rid of this problem once and for all. If this settlement goes through, she'll get to keep her house and not have to worry about going in the foreclosure and all of this. But just imagine guys, all of this stemming from a stupid violation from a little bit of mold on the outside of the house or whatever balloons into this massive problem where the city is basically taking your house away and even though this ten thousand dollar settlement is way lower than the seventy five thousand in fines that she racked up from this that's still a lot of money imagine having to pay your local government ten grand to keep your house over something as silly as this. That's one more pro tip for you guys here is that when you own real estate, make sure the mailing address that you put on file when you close on that property, you're gonna be guaranteed to receive mail at. You know, some people will put an old address or someone else's address or whatever for the mailing address, and this can cause you big problems if you're not receiving notices in the mail that pertain to your property like this. And some people might not be as lucky. You know, this woman is getting lucky that she'll get to keep her house for potentially only 10 grand, even though that is a lot of money. And other people might not be so lucky and might actually have that home foreclosed on because attorneys like this are hired to do just that. They're there to recoup the money for the city. And one of the ways they do that is through foreclosing on the property, auctioning it off for profit to pay off these unpaid fines and debts. So watch out for this stuff. Make sure you're getting your mail. Make sure that if you own a property right now, the mailing address that's set for this property is to an address where you can regularly re receive mail. And if it isn't, change it ASAP or you might be next with this. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you click the bell notification down below. YouTube will alert you every time I post a new video. And if you don't wanna wait, check out my next one on the screen right over here and I'll see you in the next one.